गुड इवनिंग मैम गुड इवनिंग डॉक्टर साहब गुड इवनिंग कैसे मैम चल रहा है बहुत अच्छा ठीक चल रहा है चैलेंजेस एज दे कम very very fantastic you are one person who faces challenges and makes things to happen that is the power of kiran ma'am it's all grace grace, grace of god who gave to this world kiran ma'am no it's all grace who gave to the world all of us <laughs> absolutely okay we start now uh pia can we start now now facebook you have sent the message Yes, sir. The recording is on. We are good to start. Yes. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very powerful evening when we have with us Her Excellency Dr. Kiran Bedi, Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry. Let me have the honor of introducing a great personality from India. who has not contributed only to india but to the global world dr kiran bedi born in a tennis playing family from amritsar in punjab in 1949 to shri prakash and madam prem lata peshawariya dr kiran bedi is the second of the four daughters while still in the school she became a junior national tennis champion at the age of 16 and asian tennis champion at the age of 22 and was ranked india's number 1 of her time dr kiran bedi is the first woman in india to have joined the officer rank of indian police services in 1972 she served indian police for 35 long years for her policing stood to power to correct repeat there are hardly any police officer power to correct power to prevent and power to get things done what a powerful statement and she not only made this statement she lived with this statement dr bedi served as police advisor to secretary general in united nations in the department of peace keeping operation in new york she has received many awards and the big one raman magasi award also which is called as asia's nobel peace award for bringing about a positive relationship between the citizens and the police dr bedi is certainly a law graduate masters phd scholar with post doctoral nehru fellowship she is also author of many books i dare i love that book i have probably given 800000 books to people around the world it is always possible again i am giving in my classrooms this book regularly to people of all nationalities in the world creating leadership and many more but this i dare who has not read must 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 read it is always possible must read these are <laughs> life changing books dr bedi has been voted as most admired person and in fact once there was a competition of having most trusted person in the country and dr bedi narayan murthy and dr abdul kalam so she is most trusted person of this country she has biopic on her life call and i love that movie dr bedi knows i have run this movie many times yes madam sir made by an australian filmmaker and recently documentary on her was featured in nat geo mega icons she runs two ngos i am also part of that ngo i am a mentor for navjati foundation wherein she helps education skills development as well as urban in urban slums and rural areas including school ke baad school i am part of that movement and presently she is the lieutenant governor of puducherry she is a keen user of technology and you can see dr bedi has following up 15 million followers 
on social network. Currently, as Lieutenant Governor of Pondicherry, she works probably from 14 to 15 hours per day. That's a formal introduction. But I want to give you an informal introduction from the core of my heart. I know and I have a personal respect and regard for Dr. Bedi. She is my mentor and she's mentored by many. But personally, she is my mentor, a guide, a friend, an elder sister. Her contribution to my life goals has been immense. And I salute her for that. I also salute her for contribution made to the learning of millions of people around the world. And my association, I call her women of elegance, women of substance, women of character, women of conviction, above all women of energy and passion. I always say there cannot be another Dr. Kiran Bedi in life. That's a fact of life. She has always been part of my life journey, especially my signature programs, Roadmap to Success, DNA of Leadership, wherein she would come and inaugurate programs. One side, Padmashri, Dr. Pritam Singh, whom we lost two uh, weeks back, and other side, Dr. Kiran Bedi coming and inaugurating. These two mentors have really handholded me in my passion of journey of excellence. Yes, Madam Sir was always part of my programs, not only in India, globally. Thailand she visited many times, and we had fantastic and fascinating programs with Indian and Thai Indian community, not only in Bangkok, even driving up country to Rayong, as well as to Ayutthaya, where ladies still remember her contribution. All those ladies are going to be on the Facebook. Unfortunately, we are going to be on Facebook after one hour because there's some technical fault. To many of leadership program, she would come and shower her blessings. You know, two major things which keep on hitting me always in my head, which she says, she says, change is law. Growth is optional. Choose it wisely. I repeat, change is law. Growth is optional. Choose it wisely. And another one recently, when we were conducting Human Power Number One in April, and when she came and she said, Mother is the quality. So give a different name to mother, that's quality. And these amazing statements come from a persona of one and only Dr. Kiran Baby. Even if I do just 10% of what she does, I would be very happy and I will go to that heaven after maybe 20, 25 years happily. Her commitment to the cause is infectious. And anyone watching her in action feels how Kiran Ma'am can do so much in this 14 to 15 hours. God bless her with her great health keep showering all of us wisdom. Therefore, when I talk about hashtag women power, she is the first women power for this global moment. Ladies and gentlemen, you must be thinking what is this hashtag women power? I would like to give you first women power program we did on 27th of April. Dr. Kiran Ma'am, Kiran Bedi came to inaugurate the program along with Dr. Asha Bandarkar, Sally from Australia, Coralina from Singapore, Ruchi from India, Sunny from US, Minaw from Lebanon, and Honey from uh, Cape Town. Then we had Women Power 2, Sister Shivani. She came along with Tahira from Singapore, Claire from England, Neelam from India, Parasto Yari from Afghanistan, NG from Thailand, and Darlene from USA. And the third one, which we did recently, 8th of June, Dr. Anu Singh Latter, Vice Chancellor of Delhi University, along with Yon from US, Somia Badagian from Mumbai, Milani from Spain, Sandra from, uh, Sandra from Fiji, Farooq from Afghanistan, and Candice from Durban, and Rafia from Singapore. That was the day when I was given the title of Honorable Woman by Sandra and the team. I am excited to be Honorable Woman 
to support this cause. What is women power and what are we talking about women power? It's a signature program of ours, a global talent. And I am actually dedicating it to my mom, whom I lost one year back. Dr. Uh, Kiran Beji knows my mom, Emaji. We lost her one year back. And we are actually targeting to create a global movement of women around the world. Women, W-O-M-A-N. W is women rising, raising from shadows, power of speaking up, O, overcoming social justice, M, motivating women and building self-esteem, E, empowering at various levels, home, workplace, society, community, N, networking and negotiations for prosperity of women. And the power becomes personal branding, ways to articulate goals, how to be visible, claiming credit of women. O, operation leads to depression, overcoming social justice, changing this negative to positive. O, women with global leadership roles, social empowerment of women. E, economic stability, creating sustainable solutions and opportunities for economic power. And R, raising the ceiling in the room and access to jobs, opportunities, self-work, and positive self-image of women around the world. And this is irrespective of caste, creed, nationality, color, and religion. That is global talents, women power, going to work. It's a global moment of caring, connecting, celebrating women from around the world. Women power is already, and I am happy to share, in first week of July, we will announce 20 chapters at 20 countries. And you have, I have just given the names of the ladies. They will become the chapters in charges. Our aim is to connect 100,000 women around the world by year end. And like other initiatives of global talent, our aim is globally talented, vocally and locally, Atam Nirbar of Prime Minister Modi's vision. Everywhere around the world, not only for India. Our PM Modi is not an Indian leader only, he is a global leader. So he is talking about Atma Nirbar, globally talented, vocally and locally. That is where we will share the information of the task forces in the LinkedIn group, which we have announced. And I request women around the globe to join us in this movement and become the change enablers for real impact and real action. Ladies and gentlemen, before I go for some of the questions with Dr. Kiran, ma'am, I have a small video to share. Who is Kiran Bedi? All of you know, let's have this video, Pia.
is a salute for women of elegance, women of substance. And I must tell you, ma'am, this evening, I was going to run the same video. Yes, madam, sir. I must give a big compliment to Isha, who has developed a very good video. Isha, all the best wherever you are. I am giving you a big clap. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You yes, have really is. made it very well. So I yes, have to change. I have to change my mind to use your video. Normally, <laughs> I use yes, madam, sir. Okay, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, we are not interview. I have not interviewed you first time. I have had many great interviews with you. But today is something very special. And I want to spend some time with you, some questions from my side, and then there will be questions from the audience. I want to engage in whosoever is on Zoom. Unfortunately, I can't take Facebook. I would like to inform Facebook that we will be live at 6 p.m. and you can see the recorded one. Unfortunately, we could not help that. There's some technical side. So, ma'am. Tell me your journey as a woman. And I, I will not say only women. I will always say women power. As a woman power, you faced challenges. You had a lot of struggles. And how did you manage and to be winner and build this brand of Dr. Kiran Bedi? Ma'am. Now you've asked, you are, first of all, I want to thank you. Thank you, Bakshi Saab. This is not the first time you've given me such an abundance of uh, respect, regards, and warmth. You be, and you've been such an anchor for us. You introduced us to Bangkok and all the donors for Navjyoti India Foundation. Your friend, Dr. Rani, and all others, I still remember. Each one of them is very, very precious friendship. And they're continuing. They're continuing to support Ujala in our Navjyoti India Foundation. And because of them, we are able to teach and educate hundreds and hundreds of marginalized sections of society. So because of you, that mm. Thailand, Bangkok, and many other of your very countries. wealthy friends became many countries. Ours. Thank many you so countries. much. Many countries. Entire country, actually. Yeah. You, you have been very, very good. And your friends, Dr. Rani in particular, and all others. Um, and the, they are remaining fresh constantly. And Ujala has been visiting um, and Neetu, they've all been visiting you time to time in Bangkok. You are asking me to um, uh, rewind. And if I go back to my growth, as I said, as you said, I was one of the four girls of my family. I, I think it was a very, uh, very attentive life. You know, I would not say the word focused. It was a very attentive life. It, it was alive to what was happening around. And why is it happening? For what for is it happening? I think I lived, I grew up in a life of attention where I was paying attention to myself that I'm a girl who I am. I'm a girl in, the, in a man's world, in a world which has so, at, during the time of 50s and 60s when I was growing up, it was, a, I, I was seeing what was happening with girls around, how um, many girls were not welcome in families how the girls were going to be dependent on their parents to be married one day. And then after marriage, they will be dependent on their families to provide for them. And that they will be all uh, dependent. Now, whether they loved during dependence or not, I didn't know. But I also saw that during that dependence, some were respected and loved and some were not. And that uh, their girls are being educated, but educated for a purpose that they are reasonably literate to be one day married off. And they must look beautiful. They must look beautiful. And that when they're married, parents should have enough to give, take give. I grew up seeing this. So it was a life of attention where what was happening to my friends? I didn't want to be like that. I wanted to be different. While that is perfectly fine uh, to happen in anybody's life, it's perfectly fine. It's a choice we all make. But I think some of were not by choice doing it because the parents were choosing for them. Parents were choosing for them. In my case, parents didn't choose for me. Parents allowed me to choose. They allowed me to say, now you choose what you want. You can make this choice. We can start saving for you. 
we will start stitching and knitting for you we will start buying up things for you and i also belong to a very uh, fairly wealthy family sir. a lot of landed property and my grandfather did tell my father why are you educating your girls so much prakash it, we have enough property to give well, they can go they will be married they got enough but my father had other dreams my mother had other dreams my father was a tennis lover and my mother was a very ardent educationist she loved education her education was cut short because her father her parents had, they saw a very very good wealthy family to be married off with so they decided to marry her off they cut short her education even when she was exceedingly well she loved education so i got two streams in my genes i got um, love for education through my mother and i got love for tennis through my father so sports came from my father and education came from my mother and both had a dream they both had a dream in the sense that they believed that the uh, girl they didn't they were not longing for a boy they they treasured whatever whoever we were they loved it they loved us to the core and in a world of boys where boys were getting everything we were the rare family in amritsar girls were getting everything we went to the best school so i went to the best tennis court and even though amritsar didn't have so i'm looking at i'm trying to tell you explain to you how this life was of attention attention to what's happening and then making my choices and the choice was that i will not be the way i'll not open my hand to ask anybody anywhere in my life to say mujhe ye chahiye please give me I'll do this i resolved in my head i'll never be a asker from anybody that's why from so it was all the time therefore love for education naturally came because without education i wouldn't have qualified for the indian police service love for tennis came as a family game but i realized that playing tennis and studying was complementing education it was holistically developing me mentally physically spiritually it was a spiritual family also a family which would pray family which would donate family which feed the poor family which had also cows to feed my grandfather used to feed the cows so many cows he was a very very devotee of a uh, brindavan so i had to write spiritual background so it was mentally physically spiritually being enhanced without being told where am i going to go what am i going to do in my life how am i going to earn my living it was just a life of uh, a growth of the kind where i was growing to evolve and be self reliant i think the word was self reliance so it was a life to word self reliance to me now when i grow up to become a life for self reliance then automatically everything matters the spiritual growth matters physical development properly stamina matters energy matters education matters but with ethics in place so there were challenges as i said the challenges were i was different so people would tease me boys would tease me while i would cycle around the city i would be questioned why do you have short hair i would play in shorts and they say so even my father was uh, teased by his father, brother saying it karne ki why do you need to do this investment into girls girls have to go away girls will one day take away all this what is going to be left with you but i used to hear that my father and parents were being told you are investing into girls ye to paraya dhan hai you know they are called paraya dhan means they they belong to somebody else they want to stay with you we used to tell our parents we know we'll be letting you be we will all be together i always believed we will never lose our parents i always believed at that time it was total immaturity thinking that everything is permanent this home is the way it is parents will remain the way they are my sisters would remain the way they are we never realized we were growing 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 so were they aging so i think it was a life of dis not distractions it was not life of distraction it was a life of attention so in that attention book matters chapter mattered teacher mattered parents mattered my the uh, praying mattered my travel mattered my friends mattered but there was no wastage of by distractions so even though i was growing up i had a few friends here and there i had boyfriends too but there were no distractions in the sense that they would divert me off my studies or they would divert me off my focused uh, tennis 
And when that awareness came that there were hormonal changes and there were needs, it was a very careful, uh, just careful pruning. This is not the time for it. I would prune saying this is not the time for it. So I would be able to prune, which means it was an observe, a life of observation that what doesn't fit in at that time to before I reach my reach where I want to be. So I think uh, it was life of this kind, which into which I actually consciously grew. But parents had a very remarkable role where they created an environment at home by which it was an environment of peace. It was an environment of harmony, but it was a life of honesty. There was no wastage in the house. There was no, uh, uh, no, just not, nothing where they would do something else and say something else. It was an authentic home, a home of truthful living, simple living, living within your means, living within your, uh, allow, uh, uh, your capacity. As my father was an employee of his own father, he had a limited pocket allowance for a while. So we did not have enough money in the house. It was my mother who would go to her own parents to get more money because my grandfather would not give it more till the property got divided and my father. But till my last sister came, the fourth sister came, we were on the allowance from my grandfather. But imagine during the whole time, my sister, younger sister came 12 years after. So first 12 years of my life, I saw my parents living within their own means and sending us to the best school. Even if it meant for my mother to go and take money from her grandparents, we saw that. And so seeing my parents doing and giving us everything built the inner resolve in me more and more, more and more of honesty, simplicity, um, authentic living, and life of sharing and giving. I think those, those the manner in which uh, the environment was, it gave me actually positive reinforcement and no hostility towards anybody. But to say, I have not to ask. My mother's asking her parents. My father is asking his father. I'm not going to ask anybody. I will be a giver even to my parents one day. And I did grow up to give. So I think that was the environment. If you grow, to me, this is called my teenagers. Children don't use their parents. Children don't choose their school. But once the child realizes that I'm specially different, I'm gifted, I have parents who have a shared vision with me, I have a school which is giving me everything right. I went to a Catholic school, a Sacred Heart school in Amritsar. And you know how the Catholic nuns are. And I had Belgian nuns at that time. They're so very fond of sanitation. They're very fond of cleanliness. They're very fond of punctuality. And they're very honest in their many ways. I found my sisters very, very, very replic, very good. I looked up to them. And they taught me very good English. When I went to the United Nations, everybody used to ask me, where were you taught? Who taught you English? And I said, my Belgian nuns taught me. So after, of course, now we have nuns from Kerala. The skill st still is Catholic, but it has now. A the question is, I got the best of this world. The fact is that I realized I was getting the best. And why should I not the make the best of it? Why should I not multiply it? So that was the positivity in me, which I developed, that I've got the best. I have to make it the best, develop the best, and then grow up to give the best to the rest of the world. So this is the way, manner in which, so whatever challenges came, hostility came, came, and competition came, it didn't matter. It was like my, we were trained to respond to it. There were responses would be almost groomed that because you were the response. So we're trained to be confident to respond and not to give in and cry sobbing, coming back home sobbing. It was not defeatist. It was, it was equal injustice. If there's an unjust injustice, you got to say what you wish to say in a manner which you should. So I think this is the grooming and the background against which I entered the Indian police service. Fantastic, fascinating. Ma'am, the way you talked about your childhood and how you have moved forward, a great message to women power around the world. Ma'am, there are a lot of women power ladies from US, from England, from Thailand, from Durban, from Australia, uh, already here. So when we talk about, we should more talk about English language so that they, uh, you know, understand. So 
love for education from mom and love for sports from dad what a beauty of combination and then the major thing which is coming out from this question which i raised is this house was totally home was totally disciplined authentic and the beauty is which dr kiran devi says i don't want to be like this i don't want to be like this i want to be different <laughs> i want to be different so the message is that as a child as women when you are bringing up your children especially the girls create this kind of home not house where you have authenticity where you lead by example we always say walk the talk and when we were discussing question number 1 so she was saying what they were talking they were doing the parents and they were following it and beauty is that she got sisters who could give her very good communication english language and today of course india is known for english communication around the world so the message is sharing caring giving honesty and simplicity i repeat caring sharing giving honesty and simplicity and she is really an example of what she is doing today i would request uh, whoever is on zoom please raise your questions i would like to involve you into the entire interview process it should not be only between me and dr bedi i would go for one more question but i would look for your questions and i will keep taking your questions and my questions together ma'am i know your family for sure but how did you balance between family kids career society at large and on the top of it personal development you still keep on studying you still keep on going to the seminars not only to address you go and uh, go to ravi shankar shri shri ravi shankar for 10 days how do you manage this how is it possible for a human being we all have one thing in common 24 hours a day it is how we use it that makes a difference ma'am how did you do it i think in the world i do believe i'm a product of very huge family support and i could have been without it by the way had i decided to live a selfish life no had i decided to only be with myself and me and myself i could have not had my parents migrate out from amritsar to delhi i grew up as a very strong member of the family that was now when i had everything i had a independent house of my own in delhi i had all the creature comforts i had a position and i had my own salary but my parents were back home in amritsar and they were very tired living a very comfortable life for themselves my amritsar my father would go to play tennis in an amritsar club my mother too would always join him he was she was there for a very fine but one day i hijacked them out and i brought them to delhi i brought them to delhi i said look papa mummy we we spent we decided we we why don't you join me and my younger sister was a playing uh, anu who went to play the wimbledon she was competing and she was then a national junior now at that age so i thought delhi had better tennis facility which i always wanted to so i brought her to delhi i said no you come and be with me now and a play and learn from the delhi lawton association the coaching so i brought anu to delhi moment i brought my younger sister to delhi parents naturally followed her. so you see i could have led a selfish life why should i uh, why should i do this i did it and i was married by that time my family in laws had total respect for what i was planning because now this home was also shared home with my family my in laws but no in laws could say how can you bring the your own family in now this is our home as well that was far ahead of its time where my home became a home for two families my own place of birth and the one which i got married to so my sister was once she came in my parents decided to come for a little break in delhi 
and I didn't let them go back. I said, no, this is our home now. Now I am back home and now in a grown up manner. Mommy, this is your home and I'm staying with you. My parents were very large hearted. They gave up their own a very lovely ancestral home in Amritsar, settled home and up their own tennis club which, with all their friends. They sacrificed for me. So I'm a product of great support, something which was both were giving and e respecting each other. My mother moving in and my daughter was born at that time. I was just wondering, what do I do? How do I work? And my, I had no plans. How do I manage my daughter? I did not know. I left her. Sometimes I would try and look for house help. But something, something didn't click. But just imagine what a grace of Almighty. Because my sister came in, because my parents gave in, came in, I got, got free to work. And my daughter also got her grandparents. And it became an extended family. So I could work. So where is the question of balance? I continue to be at home. So I think what we really need to understand as working, men, working women, we must value family support systems. But things have changed a lot. Neither is willing to give space. Parents are not willing to share space. And the, we, we, the other family is not willing to share. With the result that we struggle a lot when we can have extended families. The, in, the strength of our earlier times was extended family, but that family which would restrict the woman. My, my uh, elders' families was extended home meant because I was, uh, my father had an extended family, but they were restricting. They were controlling, but this is not a controlling or restricting. So here is an option. If you can have a positive growth, a family then becomes a rock, a total strength for you. In my case, I think I was blessed. Till the age of 50, I had my mother with me. The home was with, we were all together. My father, my mother, we were all together. And I would go home, I would go out to work 24 by seven. I came back to a warm home, home everything well. It was like coming back to mommy and daddy. So while my husband would visit me off and on because he continued to be in Amritsar. So we had, we were again in the way my personal life was, was ahead of its time. It was not a changing of the career because now it was not suiting my husband or my in-laws. Where we were, we were. And what mattered to both mattered. And I think that's the way we decided to go ahead. I would say I'm a product of an amazing example how a woman, a working woman's family support could be in-law support. In this case, it could be. My mother-in-law couldn't move to me, but she, it was a woman who would bless me from a distance a very noble soul, very noble soul. So she, but they, they didn't decide because my husband had landed property and factories in Amritsar. They decided to stay put in Amritsar while we moved to Delhi. Look, they too could have moved in. I would have had enough. The home had enough for everybody. Whether it was my husband's sister who came and studied in Delhi, she also stayed. So we became an extended home. My younger sisters also had their own children. We became an extended home. So it was a large hearted home which had space for everybody to grow together. And in that, I worked 24 by seven. Took challenges, crises home, but it was a family. Once I entered my home, it was like a castle. It was a castle of security. It was a castle of good health. It was a castle of uh, collaboration and discussion. Nothing went outside the home. I didn't need friends to go and discuss my problems. If there was a problem which was emerging through newspapers and had many, many controversies, many challenges, because every decision has a flip side of how you can dis the strength. So my message here is that where you can and you, and you can ensure that you garner family support, value it. We always saying, no, no, now it's gone, I may go. If parents can support their working children, son or a daughter, Go ahead and support. And if chair, parents care, need this care, they shouldn't be left alone. They need to be co-opted. So I'm a believer in joint living. I'm a believer in joint families. I'm a believer in extended families. I'm believing in, I believe in large home. I believe in shared home. That's what I'm a product of. Beautiful. So the message is very clear that in any case, when you are on a journey to excellence, you can't do it all alone. You need to have your family who will be part of your security ring, what she talked about, a castle, what she talked about. And as women power of the world, 
when you are in the, getting into the corporate world, into the business, in any profession, please ensure that you are supported with your family. It is both ways, give and take, support them and take their support. That's a very powerful message that too in today's environment, when our millennials are into a different mindset. But I can tell you during COVID times, ma'am, a lot of things are getting changed. People are actually thinking of living together and not being away from each other. Like we are in Asia, kids are in Canada, even they are stressing that we should be living at one place. And that is the beauty of a family life. And around the world, in US, in Canada, in uh, England, people are today talking about family. I would like to take a question from the audience, man. Please go ahead. Uh, there's a question from audience. Oh, I have Rajan Datta. Rajan knows you very well. Rajan was the president HR of Reliance Airtel. Met you many times in Delhi. Dr. Bedi, Rajan Datta, sir, very great. Your question I am going to be asking, Dr. Bedi. Women empowerment create a sustainable mission. However, how does one change the gender bias belief system in the corporate world? Rajan Datta's question, ma'am. Rajan, um, well, it needs, you see, you are, when you recruit people in the corporate world, they're already hardwired. They're already hardwired. So therefore, unwiring them, rewiring them takes a long time. So ideally is, uh, when you recruit people, you must recruit uh, looking at their emotional quotients. Wow. Look at the kind of family lives they led. What kind of parenting they had, what kind of parents they are. What I think you need to interview people before they bring come to the corporate world is what are their family values? Once you do that, then you take them forward. So not on what education did you have, which college you were, you had friends. All right, now, okay, tell me, how were your relationships with your parents? How did you grow up as a child? Tell us your child stories. What did you do for your parents and sisters and what did they do for you? How did you fight? What did you fight on? I think, how did you share a cupboard? All right, uh, how did you share your toys? You get to understand what kind of school you went and what kind of relationships you had with your friends. I think this, this is what will tell you the hidden, which the, the, uh, the degree doesn't expose. Absolutely. I think going for, go, that's why in Indian, Indian marriages, many parents still go back to find out who is he a son and daughter of. Yes. The family lineage becomes very interesting. In many cases, they go back, whose son is he? So many times you wonder, what have you to do with this father? You are choosing a boy or a girl. What have you to do? It does. What kind of upbringing did he come from? What kind of atmosphere he came from has matters, matters. However, as I said, once you've done that and everybody doesn't have the same kind of background, that means if you identify a person very highly skilled and you want that person, but the family background is not so comfortable, that means we may have to design a separate program for him to become more, raise his emotional quotient, raise his spiritual quotient. That means you may need, may need to enroll for programs or work on self-development self programs where the man becomes more sharing, more respectful, more compassionate, more giving, right? Simply and humility. I think that's where if once, those are the programs there. So that means not one standard program, but a designed program for him to get something which he missed out when he was growing up. And if somebody's already grown up with those circumstances, you got the right person, ask him to ask him, then you got, got it right. Then you take him to the next level, depending. So that means your training now needs to become customized also. So there will be some common, common uh, training programs and some would be very specific. So I would think this is the way uh, it could be. I, I, I might giving you my off the, off the head uh, idea. Beautiful, thank you very much. In fact, you have given some tips to human resource managers and business managers how to recruit, what kind of people to recruit. And here comes the power of women power, the programs which we are running at Global Talent, which is going to be free for all globally. 
Here is another question coming from Mr. Mahendra Kumar. How Dr. Bedi managed to be Dr. Bedi? Can you give some quick golden principles? I think oh, you gave a, already, but we can give one, one, one or two more. Dr. Bakshi, I just have, how did you become a doctor? <laughs> by, by working hard towards building it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so same thing applies. You also became, I went, I became a doctor because I did a PhD. Yeah. That's all. I kept studying. As I you said. Your principles of life, he is asking. <laughs> so I think the love for education. Love for education. It, the, the love for education was very ingrained. And the continuity, remaining a learner, remaining a student, willing to always up, where well, it gives you a degree. Every day we read and write. We don't get a degree, but we it have an internal degree. It means we evolve within. There's a greater clarification as we study and read every day. It's a gro internal growth because you get clarity of thought, you get new ideas, and you understand yourself better, you understand the environment better, but you don't get a PhD for that. So technically, that's what happened. I got the doctor thing because I did a PhD, but all I can say is that I do a regular internal PhD. Absolutely. Ma'am, a question from me. IPS has always been dominated by men, but there's one and only till now. There are one or two now coming up, I have seen. No, no, and there are many. There are many. Now they are, I think, 12, 20%. No, no, but to the level, they can't reach to that level. They reach the level. They, some there are some, some who have come up and they are look, look like, you know, the way Kiran Ma'am used to do. They are still your mentees. How did you, irrespective of all odds, manage to be Kiran Bedi? That too, when Prime Minister Indra Gandhi's car, you know, you know, I used to call you Crane Bedi. Everybody used to call you Crane Bedi. When you had that kind of, you know, uh, life of a police officer that you can even pick up the car of Prime Minister Indra Gandhi because it was not parked at a proper place. How did you manage this? Look, uh, having grown up with a personal discipline background. Oh, wow. Uh, when you do sports, it's personal discipline. You can't be a sportswoman without personal discipline. For wow. sports, you get up early, you do your fitness program, then you go to school, and you do well, and then you go to play tennis, and then you learn coaching again. It's all discipline. It's all part of a day schedule where you can't go wrong. You can't go to school at night and go to play fitness at, uh, in the evening. Everything has a time. There's a time for yoga. There's a time for fitness. There's a time for school. There's a time to sleep. The time of the day tells you there's something interesting with sunrise and something interesting with sunset. You can't get it all wrong. So I think I've got it right in my life. That when it is sunrise time, what is best for sunrise? What is best for early hours? So that personal discipline was my habit. So my habits were formed of personal discipline. And as I said, when I was growing up with a lot of attention, I saw injustice. I saw the uh, 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 selective application of law for the VIPs and the not VIPs. I didn't like it. In fact, one of the major reasons for choosing and going into the Indian police service was love for justice, because police ensures justice. When it arrests a criminal, it is ensuring justice to the victim. Sure. When it applies law equally, it's ensuring justice to the people whom he, was, he or she was disturbing peace. When a traffic policeman regulates traffic, he's ensuring everybody can ride smoothly. So policeman ensures regulation, discipline, justice. So for me, this was the natural service to me. So when I was appointed as Deputy Commissioner of Police Traffic, I saw the application of law very selective. One set of rules for the VIPs and one set of rules for the, for the others. I decided to take away that distinction. And I told my cops, I don't believe in this distinction. You will prosecute as per the offense, not by the who, but by the what. So you shall not look at who has committed the violation. You will commit as see what is the violation and apply the law. Even if it's a VVIP, it doesn't matter to me. But don't ask me. I'm with you. If when you apply the law equally, I am with you. I take charge. I take responsibility for it moment I enthuse this kind of self-confidence and assurance 
to the rank and file of my constabulary as a deputy commissioner of police. Prime Minister's car also became the what and the where. And sure enough, a sub-inspector gave her gave the car a ticket. And the driver came up to my sub-inspector saying, don't you know who I am, whose car it is? He said, whose is it? He says, it's Mrs. Gandhi's car. He said, it doesn't matter to me. Our rule is, you have committed the work. Here, here's the ticket, pay off. And then he rings me up, say, ma'am, Mrs. Gandhi's car. I said, very good, go ahead, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. And my DIG, then Mr. Hari Pillay, he was Hari Pillay, he, he was informed, or Mr. Ashok Tandon, one of the two DIGs, Hari Pillay's uh, IPS officer is still around, senior in age. Mr. Ashok Tandon is unfortunately no more. I remember one of the DIGs, additional commissioner, was informed that, look, Prime Minister's car has been given a ticket, and Kiran Bedi is not doing anything about it. He said, I cannot tell her. I cannot tell her anything. And he and I believed in equal application of law. So while I believed it, I also had a senior who respected my decision. So what I'm saying is circumstances also come your way with, where it works. So I did never have to interfere. I never punished any police officer of mine for a bona fide mistake. I always punished them heavily for a malafide. Here was a wonderful right decision which a young officer took by application of the policy which we had laid down that the law has to be enforced equally, whoever it be. So this is what happened. Now, how simple? Life becomes so simple if you just follow the rules and the law. You don't have to be selective. Iske liye ye, iske liye ye, iske. You this, for this. There's no need. That's the law. Read the law. Read the rules. Go. Do your work. Beautiful. So the law for everyone, whether you are a prime minister, you are a chokidar, you are a manager, or you are a supervisor. One common law, so you don't, you that have no issue. It becomes very easy. It becomes way of life. Yes. And you rightly say, as Kiran ma'am rightly say, then you pick up those habits and make it way of life because of discipline from the childhood. Beautiful. Another question coming in from Anjina Bhatt Safaya. If you are in charge, what would you do to make women empowerment a better place to work? In charge of what? In charge of the uh, taking women forward. Well, um, I give women a choice. First of all, the key is skilled. I would make every woman, I'll make sure every woman is economically empowered. She's self-reliant. Oh, she's wow. skilled even before she's educated. She's skilled to earn for herself and then educate herself. So literate herself. So I think skill in the woman's hand to become self-reliant is important. If she, she must have a skill, whether she wants to encash her skill or doesn't matter, but she needs to, what is her skill? Even cooking at home is a skill. Let her be skilled. I want her to acquire a skill. So I want to begin with saying, all right, when you grow up, what is that one skill? If you were left on yourself, would you earn your living with? Every child would say, and I would ask the boy the same thing, by the way. What is that one skill you will apply in your life to earn your own livelihood? And I've noticed that when you bring the skill and the education, rather than only theoretical literacy, is then theoretical literacy is leaving you to, to uh, find a skill. Here I would begin with that skill, keep fine tuning the skill, and then up, continue to upgrade that skill. I would ensure, personally, every woman, even if she has a cow in the house, even if a rural woman says, I love cow offending, I will see she gets a cow, she, she tends a cow, she sells the milk, she remains healthy, I'm looking at absolutely a woman at the grassroots. What is your skill? I would ask a girl. I like growing flowers. Oh, how will you grow flowers? My father has a garden. Okay, go. Let's go practicing garden. But you go to school. Now you go to school, but also grow flowers. That means one day she may be a floriculture. You never know. Let us allow. I'm good at singing. Let's go to sing. Let's go to singing class. So I think I would look for every girl to explore within what she likes and then add education to that. It's a skilled literacy. I would say skilled literacy. Beautiful. 
Anjana, I think you got a response. You have to have skill and education together to take it forward. Women empowerment is within women. And as I said, we have Women Power Program. Come and become part of this movement, global movement. There's a question from Dean Dialan. Dean knows you very well. He has hosted you in Bangalore as well. He met you in Hyderabad as well as Delhi. And he says women power is more elite and bottom of the pyramid. Women are propagators of social stigma, disabler of empowerment, and we should change this from the primary school. And he also invites you. He is part of the Pardada Pardadi, where 2,000 girl children are getting empowered in bullet share. It's a very beautiful program. And he is saying that you need to be there one day because parents are getting them married at the age of 14 and mothers are culprit. But they have changed a lot with these 2,000 girl children. He would request you to visit one day. Dean, surely I will bring Dr. Kiran Bedi one day to that place. But this question of yours, which is women are certainly at the bottom of the pyramid where we have social stigma and disabler of empowerment. How do we change that, ma'am? In fact, we think they're the bottom of the pyramid. I think they are the Aadhaar. To me, they are the real strength of the majority community. And if they are healthy, first of all, we have to make sure these women are healthy. They're healthy and economically empowered. Say so healthy and economically empowered. Once we health and economically empowered, they will be able to ward off any violence which is against them, which comes by them, which comes along. They sometimes become evicted. I was first ensure health of every woman and then say, now how will you use your hand skill? How will you use your head skill? So empower them by hand skill. So, it, the, and so therefore they're not, they are the founding, I will not say the bottom of the pyramid. They are the foundation of the society. So health is first. Secondly is, I would educate them that reproductive health is their choice and not a man's choice. Not a man's choice. They shall, uh, they will choose to become a mother and not be forced to become a mother. Third, they will choose to decide to get married and not be forced to get married. I think we must respect the, the, the kind of contribution that a woman makes because she reproduces. She brings the other person uh, uh, another humanity. Therefore, if she's unhealthy, she will produce an unhealthy child. If she is depressed, she will never be able to love the child the way the child needs to be nourished. I want a healthy mother. I want a skilled mother as a foundation of any human society. A skilled and a healthy mother, to my mind, is the foundation of a healthy world. Very wonderful. There's another question coming from uh, Kritika Minakshi Khera. She says, you were really fortunate and empowered by your family. What's your message to girls, women, who do not have family support? They have teachers. They have teachers. Fantastic. They have, te they have elders. They have teachers. They have teachers and elders. Teachers have to step in and nurture these children. So if the teacher, if the student is found wanting in parenting at home, they have to play the role of the parent outside home. Teachers have to step in. If teachers are looking only for helping them pass an examination, it's unfair. It's absolutely unfair. It's a crime. Teachers are the mentors, the coaches. They have to, they have to play the role. Forward. They have to play the role. That's the role of a teacher. Oh, there's a question coming from Brisbane. He is going to sleep. But he is attending the program, Ash Rana from Brisbane, Australia. Women power, what is the mantra? Process to raise your, raise your daughters to be next Kiran Bedi. Can you hear a message of next Kiran Bedi? How do they raise their daughters? They don't raise, they bring up. They don't raise, they bring up, they nurture, and they create an environment of a total holistic growth of their children. Create an environment. Look at the child's propensities. Look at the child's qualities. Let the child explore the child himself. Don't force the child to be somebody. Child to be a great human being, a good, happy human being. A happy human being will find their own way. So just allow them to grow. 
be with them, give them all the nutrition, give them all the love, give them all the care, give them all the sense of security and allow them to make a choice. I think be parents only if you want, if you're caring and loving. Otherwise, don't be a parent. There are many children who need to be fostered. Go and adopt them. I know Kiran ma'am has to go. She has another comment. But Kiran ma'am, what are your views on how this global women power movement needs to function? Because ladies are waiting around the world. They want to listen to you how they would take this global women power movement forward. I think they've been, they played some wonderful roles. The global power movement. The Me Too movement was great. It came through the global power movement, through the glo global forums. See, the Me Too has fixed a lot of well, there may be exceptional mistakes, but I think majority has exposed, exposed a lot of people could come up and some, one of them got arrested and also committed suicide in the prison. And that man had exploited a lot of teenagers. So what I'm saying is the Me Too movement was a product of women banding together. They came together as a force to, to protect the dignity of women. And there are many other sources there across the world and the cultural differences. With cultural differences of North, South, East and West, one can understand every region has its own challenges. But I would say Me Too was an important movement, very great contribution. Second, I think the fight for rights of, re rights of abortion. The abortion right is very critical for a woman's life. Who can, why should somebody else decide whether this child should be, when it is medically abortable, that she cannot abort. Why? If she doesn't want the child, she has a right to let, let the child go. Well, she conceived by mistake, by accident or by design, but she chooses not to be a parent and refuse. She must have the right. She must have the right to let the child go. So I think this too is a very strong movement, ongoing a debate. And so far, it's worked to work. Well, I know I'm making a very um, uh, difficult uh, statement, but I do believe that this reproductive right is very important. Third, I think right which we need to take up around as Women Global Forum, which I would offer as a suggestion, is that any woman who is tilling the land, who's as much a farmer as a, as a husband, should also be declared as a farmer. Oh. So that when the farmer incentives are given by the government, a lot of, it goes only to the man and she doesn't get it, get it unless he gives unless he shares i think if where a woman is an equal farmer and assisting the husband and equally farming the land tilling the land we should have a survey where she could be considered as an equal farmer so that when incentives are given that she also gets the incentive as a farmer Otherwise, normally I've seen they, women doing more farmland, husband doing many other, other things other than farming. But when it comes to farmer incentives, she doesn't get it if the husband is not a sharer. So I think the, I, uh, there are too many things which one can say. But off the cuff, I can pick or take up these three things. I, 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 Me Too movement and rights of reproduction, I think, are the product of the global forum. And they're doing many other um, I've seen on the website there are many environment rights, rights of environment, water. I think these are forest rights. These are women's movements which have come up and forest has been protected, uh, lands have been protected, environment issues are concerning women because it's women who walk all the distances to fetch water for the families. So I think these are very important and these are also Millennium Development Goals. Uh, coming from the United Nations. United Nations. Yeah. So I'm looking at only these three right now, but these coming together of women. But I must say, at the moment, wherever women have led their own country, whether it's New Zealand, and it was in your yeah. last global forum, uh, yes. uh, Taiwan is another, New Zealand, Taiwan, Germany, uh, in uh, Nordic countries, they have proven that they make better leaders. Absolutely, absolutely. That's the fact of life. Wherever there are women prime ministers, they have done wonderfully good during the COVID days. Ma'am, I know you are racing with the time. Now I want to get back to this. I'm sorry I cannot take all the questions, but we will certainly try to respond when uh, we have time. I will Another take time. it from uh, I will take time. it from Dr. Bedi. But uh, ma'am, now this women and uh, women power with the program which we are talking about. We are talking about educating them. We are talking about gender equality. 
we are talking about respectability we are talking about compassion and we are talking about one common word in the corporate world whether you are a man or a woman equal opportunity for Absolutely. any job any project that's right i want to take you a commitment this evening you are our women power number 1 all these ladies globally are watching you and they are looking at you as the role model of women power i need your commitment to this global movement of women power to be part of us and whenever we require your support you are with us i know you have raised me the time and you know i've always with you thank you so I've much always been part of your remarkably motivating courses i hope you continue with them the kind of always the road ahead please continue i've been a part of those inspirational courses you've trained our uh, staff in navjyoti and india vision foundation i want to thank you and it made all the difference thank you so much bakshi sir Uh, i must thank you from the core of my heart and on behalf of global talent and on behalf of all the women power ladies who are already part of it that thank you very much dr kiran bedi for your sparing your time i know you have hardly any time i would again salute you like a police officer for your contribution thank you very salute much salute you too salute you too and a e hug for you yes e hug ma'am <laughs> thank you so much ma'am thank you Thank thanks thanks atan he hug for everybody my e hug to bangkok my e hug to thailand yes ma'am my thank e you my e hug to Ra dr rani and all your friends absolutely ma'am thank, thank you very you. much and your wife and your family yes ma'am thank you so much they all are your mentees usha ji thank you usha ji thank you thank, <laughs> thank you usha ji thank, thank you very much bye bye thanks atan